It's time for another edition of Cowboys Special Edition, brought to you by AT&T. Bill Jones joined by Bucky Brooks, Isaiah Stanback, and Nate Newton as the Cowboys are on the road for the second straight week, second time in six days, really, in Cincinnati against the Bengals after the rare Tuesday night game against the Ravens, the most disappointing outing for the Cowboys uh, once again. Let's uh, kick things off and go around the horn as uh, the Cowboys are trying to get out of the doldrums and maybe they'll do it in Cincinnati this week, Bucky. Yeah, this is a, it's a I think it's a really, really important game for Mike McCarthy because we have to see if he can get this team to play at a level where they just can get a win. We can't worry about playoffs or division titles or anything. Can they simply just outplay the opponent on the other side of the field? That has been a huge challenge. I want to see if Mike McCarthy is up to the task. Yeah, Buck and I, and I, I think this is a character game. This is really going to show whether or not guys have character, they have a heart, um, if they have some dedication, if they if they actually care about um, their performance on the field, because you know this is an opportunity to go out here and play against a bad team. You know, people are considering you a bad team, but I think that our roster here with the Dallas Cowboys are substantially better uh, than than that of Cincinnati. Now they just got to have to go out there and show it. You know, last weekend Andy Dalton showed that he was that veteran quarterback that we needed. But once again, our defense failed us. Now it's time for our defense to stop saying, my bad, my bad, my fault. <laughs> Fill your gap and tackle some people. Well, maybe the players can't think about the division race. We can talk about it, though. And it is New York and Washington sitting atop the division. The Cowboys now two games out with four games to play. And both those teams, Bucky, New York and Washington, go on the road last week and beat division leaders. Yeah, I think what you've seen is, um, I mean, you talk about two new coaching staffs have been able to get their teams to buy into the mission of playing hard, playing together, and playing a physical style of football. And it didn't look good early in the year for them, but they held on to those beliefs, and we've seen them begin to win games. And so I think there's some lessons to be learned, and I, I, I do wonder if the coaching staff will look at how those teams approach the way they did their players and take some of those things and go forward and use them. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you said it. The coaching staff is really going to, they're, they're showing themselves, right? These guys all have brand new coaching staffs, and, you know, New York and, and, the, and New, York, New York and those guys are finding a way to, to find some success. Uh, meanwhile, the Dallas Cowboys are not. I mean, Coach McCarthy, this is an opportunity for him to get these guys, wrangle them together, um, and get them to buy into what he's doing. Um, you know, we need, we, we need a W, and we need a W now. Uh, he has to find a way to make it happen. You know, uh, it, there's no excuse for not winning this game right here. And Coach McCarthy has to bat out this week with his players, you know, get them to understand how uh, how winning can uh, breed success and success can breed winning. They just got to do that this week. All right. And let's uh, turn our attention to the Bengals. You know, Andy Dalton has as he's going back to Cincinnati, a place where he led the Bengals to the playoffs his first five years in the league. Let's hear from Andy now. Yeah, I, I knew this one was on the schedule. And so, um, yeah, getting to go back to a place that I played for a long time. So I'm, I'm excited about this opportunity. It'll be different, you know, being on the other side of the field, a different locker room, all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, it'll, it, it'll kind of feel a little weird being on the other side of it. But, uh, you know, it's just because I spent so much time there and, and everything. So, uh, you know, it's uh, like I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, looking forward to getting back to, uh, to play in Cincinnati. Brought to you by Nationwide, Andy Dalton on going back uh, to Cincinnati. And uh, Bucky, where do you see Andy now that he's gotten some game reps under his belt now? Uh, that was his best performance as a Cowboys quarterback against Baltimore, don't you think? Yeah, he's beginning to play winning football. And then we need the rest of the team to support him. And, you know, it's one of those things where we knew it would kick in for him. He played in a lot of games. He's had a lot of success in this league. He still has some talent. He can't do everything, but he certainly is good enough to win games. Uh, I think it should be a step in the right direction. I think you can build off that performance. Yeah, Andy Dalton showed you though exactly who he is, um, at least at least a little bit of a picture of who he used to be and what we've known him to be, what we expect him to come in and play as. And that's a veteran quarterback. Um, he's coming in, he played well last week. Um, he delivered the ball on time. He delivered the ball at a great location. Um, he had some swag to him. He got the ball out to eight different receivers. You can tell this offensive line stepped up and played for him, even though they don't have a lot of depth at that position right now, a lot of skill at that position. Everybody is starting to believe in him and believe in him that he is the veteran quarterback um, that can take these guys and hopefully win these next four games. I tell you what, I agree with you 100 percent, Isaiah. There, I mean, the receivers did a nice job of catching the ball and making it happen. And uh, the tight ends are playing big. And Coach Philbin has done a great job with this makeshift offensive line. They got them believing and going. All they got to do now 
championship. Run the ball a little bit more and keep it going. All right, we're just getting started on this edition of Cowboys Special Edition. When we come back, we turn our attention to the elephant in the room. That would be the Dallas run defense. Special Edition, presented by AT&T, is brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Salvation Army, doing the most good. And by AT&T. This segment is brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Play the new sevens scratch tickets from the Texas Lottery. With top prizes up to $977,000, there's a sevens scratch ticket for everyone. So, play today. I mean, whenever you come off a week like this and you get a short week, you got to turn around fast. Uh, you got to forget about it. It's, I mean, you have a bad play in a game, you got to turn around and forget about that as well and move on to the next play. That's just what it is. Uh, you have a bad week, you have a bad game. Uh, you just turn around as a team and, and, and focus on the next one, uh, knowing that, you got another chance. That's the beautiful thing about football. You got another chance to go do it again the next week. And if you focus on that week, day by day, uh, every practice, um, and just keep chipping away. Don't get too far ahead of yourself. We still got four more left, um, and we can and we can go out there and, and, and turn this thing around. So, um, but then again, it's, it's enough talking about it. We have to go do it. Brought to you by Auto Nation, Leighton Vander Esch as the Cowboys take on the Bengals this week. Try to shore up that run defense that has been bad for most all of this season, especially bad on Tuesday against the Baltimore Ravens, giving up 294 yards rushing. And uh, to face the Cincinnati team that's missing their featured back, uh, Joe Mixon, once again this week. But what's going on with this run defense? Let's start with you, Isaiah. Well, man, we've talked about it in the past. You know, misdirection is a, is a killer of this defense, and teams, you know, they put it on film early on in the, in the year. Um, I think week one against the Rams, uh, they put it on film that misdirection was a problem, and ever since then, every team has attacked them with that same scheme. Um, and last week was no was no different. Uh, Cleveland showed it, um, and then obviously uh, the Ravens came out and showed it. If you're a third string running back in this league, you got a great opportunity against the Cowboys. I just do not believe that we have a veteran linebacking crew. And we have a veteran offense, defensive lineman. And you letting the same thing that hurt us in the first game versus the Ram hurt us in week 13. That's not right to your fans. That's not right to your players. Do your job. Study film and understand what is before you. Look, the Ravens took advantage of what the Washington football team put out there on Thanksgiving. They, they showed misdirection and they showed gap schemes and counteraction and all that stuff gave the Cowboys problems. And so you knew early in the game you would have to stop it. Jalen Smith, Leighton Vander Esch, Sean Lee, they had a tough time at the second level. And then overall, the lack of physicality and toughness from this defense is unacceptable. And so you're always going to struggle stopping a run when you don't hit runners and hit guys in the mouth. You know, I think it's it's especially demoralizing to a team when the when the defense can't stop the run. And going hand in hand with that is when you miss field goals. And Greg Zerline, the veteran place kicker, missed three field goals, three of his four attempts in the game against Baltimore uh, the other night. And uh, that's something Isaiah that uh, they have to take advantage of the scoring opportunities that they have. And uh, when you consider what's going on with the defense. Yeah, I mean, you can't put the, continue to put that amount of uh, pressure on the defense. The offense has struggled all year to move the ball, seemingly, ever since Dak went down. I mean, and they finally get a game where they're able to move the sticks, uh, and then they can't finish with a red zone touchdown. So what do they do? They turn to their kicker, and their kicker lets them down. It's very discouraging, and they have to figure this out ASAP. Kick, kick, kick. That's all you do, my friend. I, you know, I, I'm old school. Man, kick the ball through the upright. It's so demoralizing when Zerline is not able to make those kicks because part of playing complimentary ball involves being able to knock down field goals whenever you get in scoring range. For him to miss three, it really crushed the game plan. It also crushed the confidence of the Cowboys. And I think you saw in the fourth quarter, the air go out the balloon. All right. Can they get the air back in the balloon this week against a Cincinnati team that is two nine and one on the season facing a Cowboys team that's three and nine? Not exactly a marquee matchup, but we take a look at the marquee matchups when we come back in a moment. This segment was brought to you by the Texas Lottery. 
Play the new Sevens scratch tickets from the Texas Lottery. With top prizes up to $977,000, there's a Sevens scratch ticket for everyone. So play today. This segment is brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Cowboy Special Edition brought to you by AT&T continues now. Bill Jones along with Nate Newton, Bucky Brooks, and Isaiah Stanback. It's the Cowboys and the Cincinnati Bengals, a noon kickoff in Cincinnati this week. And let's uh, talk about this Cincinnati offense and what the Cowboys need to do to stop them. Of course, they lo lost their first-round draft pick, Joe Burrow, to an injury. Brandon Allen has started the last couple of games at quarterback for them. They're without Joe Mixon as well. They do have some threats at wide receiver. Nate, what do you see in this Cincinnati offense? I see a one that rushed for 3.8. They passed for 6.5 for a total of 4.8 yards of play. They, they, this is a drugstore game. They can fix what's ever ailing the Cowboys right here. This defense can line up and dominate this offense. It should be no issues. You know, Nate, every time we've said this, we said it against the Giants, we said it against the Washington football team. <laughs> I'm not really to say that they're going to go to the drugstore and fix all the ailments. I will say this. This is a game where I think Mike Nola can be very, very simple. He can make the emphasis on effort, toughness, making sure they run to the ball, not let the ball to get thrown over the head. If they do, they'd have a chance. But Cincinnati does have some talent on the play. Yeah, I don't know how much of a drugstore this is. I don't know if this is a drive through or you got to get out the car and go in the store. But uh, <laughs> either, <laughs> either way, uh, these guys do they do have a recipe uh, for some medicine that we uh, we obviously need. Uh, but they do have some weapons. So they got they got little Giovanni Bernard back there who, who could tote that thing. And then they also have Tyler Boyd and uh, A.J. Green. You know, I know we haven't heard his name in a while, but he still is that guy somewhere deep down inside. So we can't let these guys remind themselves of who they are as players um, with, with our defense. And again, of course, they got another 6'4 receiver, the rookie uh, second round draft pick, T. Higgins, who's having a big uh, rookie season for them. Oof. All right. Uh, as far as the defense goes, uh, Nate Newton, uh, this defense for Cincinnati has kept them in games. In fact, that's the last couple of weeks. They've only given up one touchdown uh, in the last two games, each, each of the last two games. They play, uh, they've been playing great team defense. They don't have that super standout guy. But it, like, like we want from the Dallas Cowboys, they're showing some physicality, they're showing some toughness, and they're lining up and they're playing hard. You know, that goes a long way, and I think that's the big thing, and that's why I think we need to be cautious on sleeping on the Cincinnati Bengals. We've seen these try-hard, uh, give-effort teams have been able to win games, and for the Cowboys, a team that's been up and down in their effort and performance, this is a challenge. But you're right, this defense will play hard, and they will take shots to hit you in the face when they get a chance. Yeah, I think the biggest threat um, that we're facing this week is their record. Um, obviously, with, with their record just being the way it is, um, you know, the, the defensive coordinator can throw whatever the heck he wants out there because there's nothing to lose. That's the biggest threat we have this week. And maybe the Cowboys can learn a little bit from the way Cincinnati is playing defense and keeping their team in games. All right, the matchups to look for when we come back here on Cowboys Special Edition in just a moment. This segment was brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. This segment is brought to you by AT&T. It's the Cowboys and the Cincinnati Bengals, a noon kickoff in Cincy this week as we welcome you back here to Cowboys Special Edition brought to you by AT&T. And let's look at uh, some matchups to look for in this game. And how about we start with you, Isaiah Stanback, as you take a look at the Cincinnati wide receiver, Tyler Boyd, who has 73 catches on the season against this Cowboys secondary and specifically Cheeto Awuzie. Yeah, Cheeto is going to need to call Frito, the rest of the gang, and everybody else that can come up and cover this guy because he he's a threat. Um, um, obviously, we talk about Higgins. We talk about uh, A.J. Green. I don't think they're going to be able to key, be able to key in on one particular guy, um, but all these guys are threats. All these guys are weapons, and they all have some gas, a.k.a. speed. So uh, we need to strap up and be able to get our hands on these guys uh, uh, early and often. All right, uh, Nate, going to take a look at that uh, Cowboys run defense this week. They do catch a break because Joe Mixon is not playing, 
for Cincinnati. They got the veteran Gio Bernard, who has uh, taken the load uh, pretty much. He has uh, been a third down back throughout his career, getting more uh, snaps now as their lead back, uh, so to speak, right now. How do, you, how do you look at that matchup, Nate? I look at it, though. You, you can slow him down running. He's not that great of a runner. But as a pass catcher coming out of the backfield, especially on third downs, this has been our weakness. Another one, our weakness, that linebacker, they got their hands filled. And when they get a chance, man, on option routes, run him into, run him into your other partners, man. Don't try to have a guy one-on-one. All right, and uh, how about Bucky uh, Amari Cooper? We saw him back active uh, last week as uh, Andy Dalton completed 21 passes to wide receivers last week. I think maybe that was a little bit of a product of more practice time in the last week and, and getting on the same page with his guys. But uh, Jesse Bates playing pretty well for Cincinnati in that second year. Yeah, Jesse Bates is absolutely playing really, really well. But this is a game where I think Amari Cooper has to put his stamp on it. He is a dominant number one receiver when given the opportunity. Uh, I think the Cowboys have to make it very, very simple. We can talk about Zeke and Tony Pollard running the ball. Amari Cooper has to be the focal point of the passing game, and then it flows from there. Amari Cooper needs to have a 100-yard game for the Cowboys to be successful this week. And then, Bucky, how about the way the Cowboys offensive line played against Baltimore on Tuesday? Really impressive. Very, very solid. Did a really good job controlling the point of attack. Did a great job in pass protection. It wasn't until late that Andy Dalton started getting knocked around. I thought this was an outstanding job by their young bookends. Uh, hats off to Joe Philbin for getting his guys ready to play. And uh, quickly, let me ask Nate, uh, the, our offensive lineman, he's got some applause there for the offensive line. You liked what you saw, Nate? I've been liking it all year. I mean, I, Coach Philman has had his hands filled trying to put this thing together, make them a unit, and they've done a great job. And B Bucky Brooks, you presented that so sweetly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, some final presentations from Bucky, Isaiah, and Nate when we come back on Special Edition in a moment. This segment was brought to you by AT&T. Special edition presented by AT&T was brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. AT&T. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass. Final couple of minutes here of Cowboys Special Edition brought to you by AT&T as we get you ready for the Cowboys and the Bengals. The fourth quarter of this Cowboys season. Can they salvage something in the fourth quarter of the season? All right, what do they need to do to win in Cincinnati? Bucky, let's go around the horn. Let's start with you. Keys to victory. Do the little, thing, do the little things to avoid losing games. Eliminate the pre-snap penalties. Get rid of the turnovers. And let's see if we can eliminate the blown assignments. Don't let the ball fly over here. If they do those things, they have a chance to win in Cincinnati. Yeah, I'm going to go with Andy Dalton. I think it's a, this is his payback game. I think that he has to have the game of his life. I think that he will have the game of his life. If this, uh, this if this offensive line can identify the blitzes, this cover, they like to run cover zero. They can identify it. They can get physical, block it up, and give Andy opportunity to get it out to these receivers. I think we, heck, we have a heck of a game. What I'm about to say is kind of be it's, it's weird, but control the middle of the field. The last two teams have dominated either by running or throwing the middle of the field. Whether you have to keep two linebackers in the safety deep, or whether you have to stack uh, the, a guy over the center and the, and, the two, and the two guards, you have to control the middle of the field to be able to win this game. All right, and then finally, Nate, let me ask you this, because you always pick the Cowboys to win. How much are you going to oh, pick no, them to no. win by this week? I'm, hey, bro, I'm Charles Bach. That's when I put on this nice coat today. I guarantee. <laughs> I guarantee. <laughs> I, love, I, I love the coat. Did you get that from Michael or Dion? <laughs> from both. Touch it both. They smaller than me. I had to get, get fitted up. Touch it both. All right. We'll see you, we'll see you again next week on Special Edition. <laughs> 